Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner. We are navigating the journey. And today's journey is not so far away, but yes, it is. We are going to Waianae, which is 30 miles toward the sunset and the most beautiful sunset. And in the winter, the waves are fantastic. Yes. But today we're not, we don't get to go in the waves. However, for those of you that are way far away, do take a chance to Google Y and I and look at the waves and look at the sunset. It is spectacular. Today we are going to visit with my new friend. And you know, I only talk to good friends now. And she is so precious. Melody is a what, uh, what is she called now? She is a counselor, counselor, why and I visit, no, Holly Vista, why and I, I get it, I'll get it right. And yes, and she is working out there. Uh, it's, it's such a lovely place. And it is a facility, a beautiful, beautiful facility for women and children, women with children who are getting a, a new start, a new way of life um, after going through a lot of unhappy things. So, Melanie, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Thank you for having me. And honestly, um, it is really a pleasure to have you and to have you talk about what is going on out there, especially given where we are with this COVID-19 and um, what it is that you're doing out there. How are the women handling this COVID-19? And what all, tell me about you first. Uh, let me share, you know, I've got to tell you about my friend. For the last 20 years, has it been 20 years? It has been, been 20 years. I've been part of the project for maybe 15 of those? Yes, most of the time. Okay, we have worked on the Martin Luther King Peace Poem Project, which is 21 years this year. Mm -hmm. And Melanie has been with us here on Oahu for the award ceremony, which is absolutely fabulous. And at some point, we're going to have to talk to Melinda and talk about how this is going to affect us with the schools being closed. However, today, but today we'll talk to you about what you're doing out there with Holly Vista Y and I. So I am a, yes, I'm a therapist for Catholic Charities Hawaii. And uh, we have several programs going out in Y and I that I um, am part of. Um, I think what brought us together this time was uh, Hala Vai Vista, which is a low-income housing complex um, where I'm based out there. Um, I did a training video for them that got your attention. Um, we also have two other facilities out that way, uh, Villages of Maili and Maili Land, which are transitional housing. Um, so we have a lot of families, some individuals, um, in part of those three programs. So I'm representing all three of those today. Now, what does Catholic Charities, uh, how do they work with you? So um, I work for them. They have um, a lot of services being offered out there. So it's not just housing. You know, we have um, a lot of support services that we offer our residents. We have counseling, that's my piece. Um, we have a lot of case management. Uh, employment preparation, childcare, all kinds of services that are out there to support our residents. So I'm part of a very holistic program um, for all of those residents. And, okay, I, just as a caveat, uh, Catholic Charities is a nonprofit organization. It is not the Catholic Church. So no. we got, I know most people don't, don't know the difference. Um, having been a Catholic for the last 80 years or more, uh, the Catholic Church is 
when you talk about it, is spelled with a capital C. But the word Catholic means you know, all encompassing, and that's spelled with a small c. Just, just so we get our grammar right. <laughs> so, but I, I, um, we all know the work that the church does, not only with you, but throughout the islands, throughout everywhere that you go, Catholic charities are there. And mm -hmm. especially now, when people are so desperate, when they need food and shelter. So I am honored, really, at, uh, to talk to you about what they're doing and what you're doing. So tell us more about the project. Well, I'm honored to be a part of that project, um, especially with COVID right now. We have a, a lot going on. Um, especially at Hala Vai Vista. Uh, they have so many uh, wonderful community partners are uh, contributing food um, that uh, we have to coordinate this effort to uh, get all our volunteers together and get them on the same page, which is why I did that video. So we are getting food donations from Waianae Coast Comprehensive Health Center, um, the Hawaii Food Bank, Aloha Harvest, DOE and Aloha Aina. Um, we have a lot of support um, that we're getting for our residents from Word of Life, which is a, a long time uh, partner of ours in the community. Um, Kapa'alana Partners in Development are helping us with educational resources for a little Kiki and their parents. So it's very big collection of wonderful supporters. Um, so we've still got all of our Catholic Charities folks out there, boots on the ground, um, figuring out how to distribute the food. It's quite a production. It's not as simple as, you know, here we have food, great. Someone needs <laughs> to deliver that. And with social distancing, you can't have a mob of people all in one place, right, to pick up the food. So it's quite a, quite a uh, delicate procedure to figure out all these logistics. So. Um, meanwhile, here I am in Honolulu, oh. um, observing from afar. Well, now you sent the cutest video about the training for your VISTA volunteers. So um, let us take a look at your, at your video. Okay. for Catholic Charities serving Hala Vai Vista and the Waianae community. And on behalf of Catholic Charities, I want to thank you so much for your service. You are an inspiration to us. You are indeed our helpers, and we couldn't do this project without you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Today, what I'm going to share with you are a few practices that we can use to keep ourselves safe and keep each other safe and our residents safe. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it light. Um, some of these things are things that you've probably already heard, so I'm going to try and put my own spin on them, and I'll be teaching you along with my family. So hopefully it won't be boring. This is not a flashy training video. This is a quarantine-style boot camp. So hang tight, and I hope I get to thank you in person soon. Take care. Okay, so the first guideline we want to cover is be safe. So if you're not feeling well, if you're sick at all, we want you to stay home and get better. Mr. Bear here showed up today coughing and sneezing and he's got his day quill and his Kleenex. So we're gonna ask him to go home and rest. So the second part of staying safe is wearing a mask. So Governor Ige has actually made this a rule now. Anybody who's doing business outside the home, interacting with people needs to wear a mask. And it's a good idea. What we know about masks is that they help us keep those droplets to ourselves, those droplets that come when we cough or sneeze or even talk, then they're not gonna get spread to somebody else. So basically my mask right now is helping keep Richard safe and Richard's mask is keeping me safe. So thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Let's not forget about our residents. They need masks too. These guys are all gonna need masks. Why is it all pointing back? 
That's the thing about COVID. One in four individuals who has COVID has no idea they're sick. They don't have any symptoms at all and they can still pass it on. So it's really important that we all have masks. The volunteers, the residents, everybody. So are we ready to go? Yes. Okay, let's go get the food. I still think it's the llama that has COVID-19. The llama? What makes you think the llama has it? He looks shifty. Shifty. Oh my God, Richard, you've got to stop watching those shows. So the relatively good news about coronavirus is we do have some things we can do. We can wear our masks and we can social distance. So rule number two is make space. As you can see, we've got our residents lined up about six feet apart like this yoga mat between Ellie and Kitty. So it's not fun, but for now that's kind of the way it's got to be. So we're going to aim for six feet and six feet isn't so bad. I mean, we're six feet apart and we can still be social, right, Richard? Richard? And anyway, um, the good news about social distancing is it's a good opportunity for you to practice working with your kids on measurement. So you can talk about feet, yards, all that kind of stuff. So speaking of the kids, Richard, Richard, what? when was the last time you checked on the kids? Oh, it's been a while. We better go check on them. Okay. What did you guys do today during distance learning? Oh, we were practicing being six feet apart. Uh, social distancing. Oh, you guys, have you forgotten already what you covered with dad today? Social distancing, six feet. This is not six feet. You guys remember what a foot is? How many inches? Misha? Shanti, how many inches in a foot? This is a foot, remember? Yeah, 12 inches, and we need how many of these, Nisha? Six, six, six times 12. Richard, don't forget to wash your hands before packing the bag for my auntie. Yeah. Honey? Yeah? Did you wash your hands? I don't hear water. Nick, she's going to tell me to sing happy birthday twice. Honey, I don't hear you singing. I just called to say I love you. I just called to say how much I care. I just called to say I love you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Aw, thank you. That's better. I think that was 20 seconds. Good job. Did you tell them the good news? No. Ah, okay. So the good news about the coronavirus is that the only thing protecting it is a thin layer of grease. And if you really soap hard, let your hands foam up, that's gonna break down the grease coating and kill the virus. Does that mean we have pizza tonight? Yeah, that means we have pizza tonight. Okay, now we've gotten to our fourth rule, don't touch. In other words, don't touch your face. And I know you've heard a lot about that, but that's because that's how the virus is transmitted, right? We touch something contaminated with the COVID virus, then we touch our mouth or our nose or our eyes, and that's how the virus enters our body. What people aren't talking about is what happens when you touch your mask. So if you're out in the world getting exposed to COVID potentially, it's on the outside of your mask. So I want to demonstrate what will happen if you touch the outside of your mask instead of just putting it on and off, just using the little straps. So to simulate COVID, I've used grape jelly that shows up nice and clear here on my mask. So let's pretend I'm wearing my mask and it doesn't fit well. So I'm adjusting it by the front here, trying to get it right and oh no, look what I've done. So let's say now I go and I no touch my eyes. Thank you, honey, for looking out for me. Actually, we're running out of jelly. So the good news about coronavirus maybe being on your hands or on your mask 
or on a surface is that there's an easy solution to all three of those and that is to clean. It's not fun, but it works. Plus, it's really attractive in a partner. So if you want to meet a new partner or if you want to make your partner really happy, all you got to do is scrub a little bit. Honey, I'm done. Oh, let's see. Wow, it's so sparkly. Ooh. Is it time for dessert? Yes, it's time for dessert. Hey again, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking with us through that whole video. We hope you learned a little something maybe, or at least had a chuckle or two. We will get through this. In the meantime, we wish you a good project. We will be thinking of you and sending you all of our aloha from Honolulu. And I hope to see you very soon. From my family to yours, much aloha and a hui ho. Bye. I don't want the bye. <laughs>the ear and it tucks in under the chin and over the nose so nothing can very get well yes oh yes <laughs> <laughs> it is it feels comfortable it's it feels better than the, the paper ones because the paper ones you do have to sort of get them to fit on your face they're tricky they are now I don't know what it's made of, but it is quite comfortable. So, and now, okay, so tell us about the feeling that's going on um, that the, the video was made for and the cats are darling. So, oh, thank you. Yes, the cats were. were the <laughs> <I think. Yes. laughs> um, so the, uh, yeah, the, we have all of these um, generous donations of food. And so they're, right now they've, kind of figured out how to coordinate the different deliveries and distributions and now we need volunteers so we're still looking for volunteers so if anybody out there is uh available and would like to volunteer um we would love to have you um so the video is basically to train the volunteers since we can't do one training with a bunch of people in the room we had to come up with a way to do it sort of single file if you will so um with the video, I think they're training, you know, individuals, you know, kind of one at a time. Um, well, now, uh, when do you need volunteers? Uh, yesterday. Like, <laughs> we're, they, they've been doing this distribution. I don't know how they've been doing it. Um, our program director out there, Fanshawn Kamil Young and Maria, our social worker, like, I don't, the two of them have somehow been doing this. Um, but I I know they're going to need more help. We need so if we, if 
people that are watching that want to uh, help, how can they contact you or who do they contact? I have a special number of uh, Chio who will patch you through to the right um, person. And her number is 520-7721. So anyone- Can you that again? 520-7721. And her name is Chio, and she Chia. Will make sure she gets you in touch with the with the right folks and gets okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, for people that aren't in Hawaii, that's an eight hundred eight. It's an eight hundred eight number. Um, and uh, we you know we encourage you to visit our our website, Catholic Charities Hawaii um, dot org. Um, there's all information about all our programs there. There's a link where you can donate. And if you wanted to specifically direct your donation to White and I, there's a little comment section where you could just type for White and I, and um, the contribution will go straight to them. Oh, and for anyone that wants to don't uh, to volunteer, uh, let me tell you that since uh, we are in quarantine, the traffic is easy. You can get out there without a whole. Oh my goodness, it's what a true. blessing! the traffic without the traffic it is just and it's such a beautiful ride the ocean, it is a beautiful community it is and i i was the last time i was out there it was just perfect it felt like old hawaii without all the traffic you know and the waves were gorgeous and it was just just fabulous so it does anybody, feel that way it does anyone that wants to go out and volunteer again go to the website and the telephone number is, we have the num number on um, with us It'll, and they'll post it again at the end of the program, the telephone number that you need to call. And I am asked to take anybody now that we're closed down and shut in, this would be a great opportunity to pack up the kids and put them in the car and drive out there and have a lovely, lovely day. It's just gorgeous. So now, what else do you do? As a, what else goes on out there? You're so, a counselor. As a therapist counseling. right now, um, you know we are we are a little bit challenged, but um, it's it's good. It's kind of making us get creative and innovative. So, for example, we have a lot of kids out there who don't have computers. They don't have technology. Um, and you know, I'm supposed to be working with a kids group there, but they they don't have that technology. So what we've been doing is um, writing letters to one another, old fashioned old fashioned letters. Uh, now, that's hell, great. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I'm getting to know the kids. And then for the kupuna, uh, they also have a group, and I think it's been really hard that they haven't been able to meet. So what we're doing for them is calling them, checking in on them. We created a newsletter for them to try and you know bring us back together. And we're going to try hosting a, a Zoom version of the regular meetings uh, this month in May. Um, so you know we're we're doing telehealth for our counseling clients. Um, so most of them we're meeting sort of like this on on DoxyMe um, and on the phone for folks who don't have computers or internet. So we're, we're keeping uh, busy. What about making postcards uh, for the children? And the reason I say that is that this generation doesn't know what a postcard is. That's true, right? Yes, they have no idea what a postcard <laughs> is. So not just letters, but postcards. And they can make them, once show them what a postcard can look like with a drawing on one side and the message on the other. They That's can, a good idea. I might yes. use that for my next activity. Thank yes. you. It, it, you know, most most people this generation has no idea what a postcard is. The only time they ever get a postcard is when somebody's campaigning and say, vote for me. <laughs> but, Which is interesting here in Hawaii, right? I mean, yeah. postcards have we gotten from Hawaii? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my grandson, one of my grandsons, is in California and his class, uh, they asked for postcards from as many different places as they could. And so I have sent them all these postcards from each island, which meant because nobody else has a grandmother in Hawaii. And so, <laughs> but I was amazed that they did not know what postcards are. Yeah. Yeah. It 
it's 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 a it's an amazing thought actually <laughs> i like it because so much of what we're doing is visual you know with the yes. young kids they you know they can't write much to me so they're sending me pictures and they're I'm, already doing it yeah they're already doing that naturally and me too right so i i draw them pictures of me you know here with my cats doing my work from the computer just to give them a taste of you know what melanie is like right now um so yeah, visuals are important. These are, they're visual kids. Well, I am too. So, and I'm not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> You're a kid at heart. Oh yeah. Well, what's the point in growing up, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now, okay, directions. How do we? If the volunteers, anybody that's volunteering to go, and I'm encouraging everybody to go while the traffic is down and beautiful. Um, so how do we get there? So, um, well, first you want to communicate with us so we know about you and we can, we can give you further directions on where to, where to meet, um, and, and, you know, what time and all that. But, you know, basically you get on the Farrington Highway going out toward Makaha and you just keep going until you hit White and I. Um, it's pretty easy to get there. Um, but again, you know, we have a, a number you can call if you want to join us, 520-7721, and Chio will make sure you get everything you need. Um, for anyone needing assistance, um, we have our main number for Catholic Charities, which is 521-4357 or 521-HELP. So anyone who needs our support, that's where you would call, or if you have other inquiries, if you call that number, you'll get routed to the appropriate department. We have a lot of programs, so. Um, do you do you need a uh, now? You're you have food, but what about other items? Do you need anything else? Definitely, we you know now we now that we're going to have volunteers there and residents doing pickup, we definitely need masks. Um, it seems like everybody needs masks right now, and we really um, we really could use computers for those of our, our kids who can't access distance learning right now. Um, that would be a wonderful gift. If anyone out there has the means for that, that would be uh, a terrific help to us. Um, uh, now, there was this run on toilet paper. <laughs> People were crazy. What other supplies do you need? Well, you know, we're not going to turn that away. Um, I know Word of Life has been really uh, providing us with uh, some of those things, but I'm sure we could use more of those things. They've been providing us with soap, cleaning supplies, toiletries. I think Fanchon told me about an individual who needed a gas card to get to work because he didn't have enough money to buy gas. And they came through with that for him. It's, they're getting very creative. Um, so those are... What about about paper for the children, you know, colored paper, construction paper, things like that. We're, sure, we're never going to turn that down. Once I get back there and I'm working with the kids group, we're going to need all that because we do a lot of crafts, um, cooking. So certainly contributing to our supplies fund would be wonderful. Um, and uh, clothing? Uh, I don't know about the clothing, but again, if you call Chio, that number I gave you, she will probably have that information. Yeah. Well, we are just about out of time, but it's a pleasure visiting with you. And I am so pleased that Catholic Charities is really helping out so well with these. And uh, most people have such a poor idea of the Wyandai Coast. So I'm inviting everybody to take a drive out there and see how really lovely it is and what a beautiful facility you have. And it, it is just absolutely lovely. So again, I want everybody to take a drive out, especially as pretty as the day is today, and just take a drive out there and take a look, drive around. And uh, gas is cheap today anyway. <laughs> it was made three dollars and 35 cents or something like that wow but, yeah well thank you for having me marcia i really appreciate the opportunity to to talk about what we're doing out there it really is uh, it's inspiring to see what what's happening out there well um i am very proud of you and the work you're doing and you've always been such a wonderful person and always so willing to, to help 
So this is great. It's a perfect gift you. for you. Thank you. And, and we will see you soon. We have to leave. Yes. And aloha. And we'll aloha. see you next time. Thank you. Aloha.